My dear group of owners and associates spread across various cities of Gujarat and Maharashtra, you would by now have known that we have introduced a comprehensive form for you to be able to serve your clients in a better way. The form obviously as you would have seen is definitely a long looking form, a completely huge thing and it might scare you as to do I have to fill such a long form? Will my client like that I bring such a long form in the process of buying or selling a property? And all these questions would have come to your mind. I'm sure the broker owners would have introduced the form in various sessions that they might be doing or in various team meetings. But we thought that we'll just help you understand the complete usage of the form so that you can implement it in the best possible manner in your day-to-day -day offerings to the customer. If you have a form with you, it would be ideal that you take the form along with you so that you can parallelly go and see as to what each section of the form is meant to be. As we see, the first part is a block, which is the basic client information. Now when we go for the basic client information, it captures all the basic points about a particular client, be it his name, be it his uh, what you would call his contact details, email ID, telephone number, mobile number, address or maybe when we are looking at something like what is his income or from where he belongs all that basic information can be captured in the A block which is client information. Over here you are also given space for affixing his photograph and his visiting card just in case if you are able to also get those things in the first meeting itself. The idea is that if you are able to capture his details in the first meeting, it becomes a bit easier for us to be able to interact with him because we know for sure as to what would he be involved in day to day things. Apart from that, there is also some space for putting in his date of birth and also his date of marriage anniversary or things like that. I am sure you would want to greet your clients on his birthday, in his or her birthday or similarly his marriage anniversary and maybe be in his good books so that whenever he thinks of a real estate agent it is you as a person he thinks of first. So that's your basic information as a basic client information that you capture initially and we move on to B block. The B block is meant for the type of client and when we look at the type of client what happens is that there are typically four types of client that you work in the real estate market. One is your buyer, one is your seller, one is your lessor that is the landlord or one is the lessee which is the tenant. And of all these four types at any given point, one point of time for any one given property the client is going to be just one of this. So we have to look at just one particular type of thing that is either a buyer or a seller or a lessor or a lessee and based on that we have to take a decision as to how we want to serve this particular client. Say for example he wants to sell his 2 BHK flat then we just are going to use him as a seller and we will not be looking at using it as a buyer form. Similarly if he wants to buy a 2 BHK flat we will use it only as a buyer and not as seller or as a lessor or a lessee. So the idea is that out of all these four blocks, only one block is to be filled at any given one point of time. This form, if in case a client has multiple requirements, say for example he wants to buy a flat but only after selling his old property. So at that point of time it is two leads for you. One, he wants to buy a new flat and second, he wants to sell his old flat. So two different forms should ideally be filled for the same client so that you know that okay for this buying requirement what is the work I am doing and for this selling requirement what is the work I am doing and both of that parallelly cannot be tracked or managed in a single form and that's the whole idea of why the type of client will just be only one at any given one point of time. Here we also have something in terms of a contract type and that is either you have an exclusive mandate with the property or you have an open mandate or maybe you have a semi-exclusive mandate 
and for what time period you have that mandate and that is what is mentioned in this type of client form as you move to the block C the block C is details of the property and when we look at the details of the property it could be either his buying requirement it could be his selling requirement or it could be a residential or it could be a commercial and depending upon the type of property be it in a complex be it the number of floors or be it the amenities the features or distance from various locations or landmarks within the city all of that has been captured in the details of the property also there is something called other details of the property which is mentioned over there so you can write down any specific features or points about the property at that point of time so if you look at the what we have covered till now the a block was client information the b block is the type of client and the c block is the type of property or the details of the property that he wants to buy sell or maybe lease and based on that we capture all this information in the first meeting itself the second blank in the part of the form where you just filled in the city that you belong to the second blank over here mentions the brokerage that you are going to receive from the client now this particular brokerage you can write in terms of percentage you can write in terms of maybe the fixed amount that you are going to charge for the commission or whatever form that you are deciding the brokerage upon and based on that you take a decision that okay this is the brokerage that we are going to charge and this is how we are going to actually work on it the last is obviously the customer signature and based on the signature you actually take a final call that this is the amount of money that you are going to receive and that is the confirmation that you are getting from the client that yes i am going to pay you this particular brokerage while we teach real estate we generally have this particular problem that we how do we get a confirmed buy in that yes the client is agreeing to pay the brokerage to me we always say that if a client is ready to sign on a piece of paper agreeing to the brokerage that he is going to give to you then he is more likely to pay you the brokerage by signing on maybe a piece of check what you would say to ultimately ensure that you are able to actually receive your brokerage now the whole idea of doing this particular thing is to ensure that you have a clear idea as to what is the amount of brokerage you are likely to receive in the next um, one month or two months depending upon the hard work that you will do on this particular transaction by taking it forward apart from that as we are meeting the client in the first meeting we are also going to give him the last perforation which is over here which is mentioned as for client now this perforation contains the agent's visiting card and so the agent when he gives this particular perforation to the client the client obviously has an idea that who is the person that he is supposed to contact and he'll obviously contact the agent because the agent's visiting card is stapled or stick over there there is also space for the client's form number and the idea is that if in case the client wants to get any kind of knowledge about what has happened to his property then he can contact the office or the agent or the regional office anyone and we are all able to support him as to what has happened on this particular form number and based on that particular form number details we are able to update him on whatever has happened on the property transaction and that's where this particular thing really helps in taking things forward as we move on the next block in the form is the d block which contains the comparative market analysis when we look at comparative market analysis the comparative market analysis can be used for both buyer as well as a seller and it can be used to do what you are you can see is your homework on the property as to whether it's really worth working on the property or not say for example you get a listing somebody wants to sell a 2 bhk flat for 95 lakhs in a certain area and you want to take a decision as to whether this listing is really worth it or not now when we look at this particular listing 
then what we find is that we have to compare the listing with many more listings available in the same area. It could be in terms of maybe the same building, it could be its nearest transactions or the closest similar buildings available on sale and based on that you are giving yourself a clear idea that whether this building can or flat can actually be sold for 95 lakhs or not and whether it's worth working for you on the transaction or not. So we have given some few rows and what you need to do is just write down that okay the nearest listing you can probably find it from say portals like Magic Bricks 99 Acres or Remax Dirtin. You can also find out through maybe newspaper advertisements or maybe you can find out through your local agent contacts as to what was the last transaction in the area and you get a clear idea as to what the nearest transactions have been and whether 95 lakhs makes sense for the seller or not. Maybe the listing will attract only 80 lakhs. Maybe the listing can attract maybe 110 lakhs, that's 1 crore and 10 lakhs. So depending upon the type of uh, listing that you are getting, whether it's overpriced, whether it's underpriced or whether it's fairly priced and that decision can be taken on the basis of comparative market analysis. Over here you can also look at maybe introducing yourself even if it's a buyer and the buyer you can say that he wants maybe say a 2 BHK in 90 lakhs in XYZ area, then what are the 5, 7, 10 options? which will actually fall in the 90 lakh budget range for the buyer and based on that you are actually going to involve yourself in the transaction process by saying that okay these are the 5-7 buildings that fall for your budget and we'll try to accordingly search for properties in this price point for you to help us take the transaction forward. As you move to the back side you'll find a e-block which is the property viewing details and when we look at the property viewing details what we find is that most of the times we show the property to various clients and after we show the property to the client there is a situation that sometimes the client says that we have not seen the property through you we already knew the seller or we already knew the buyer and both of them actually then try to avoid you paying the brokerage so the idea is, as we show a particular property, if we are working for a buyer, then whatever property we show to him, or if we are working for a seller, whatever property is shown to whichever buyer comes and visits the place. So all this particular information is captured in this particular block, which is the e-block, which contains the property viewing details. It obviously contains the serial number, the date on which you showed the property the address of the property and more importantly also the signature of the client. The idea is to ensure that yes we showed this property of yours to a particular client, maybe a buyer or maybe vice versa when you are saying that okay as a buyer you saw x number of properties through us and each time you gave me a signature while you saw the property and this remains as an important proof for us to ensure that yes we can actually work with the clients more effectively and secure our brokerage also and so it becomes really useful. Block F and Block G are two parts of if and at all you are closing a transaction and the idea of these two blocks is to ensure that you are actually able to talk about how you are going to take the transaction forward. So if suppose they like a particular property, then what are the documents required for agreement processing? What are the documents required for legal processing? All of these documents have been mentioned over here. It has been found many a times that our broker associates are not able to actually talk about all the documents that they would require for agreement processing or legal processing. And all those details are captured in this particular block that is the F block. Similarly, the G block, it contains all the total costs involved in doing a real estate transaction. So right from obviously having the basic price of the property to something like maybe stamp duty, registration, maybe floor rise charges or what will be the token amount or specific charges maybe if you have in Ahmedabad then there is a specific order charge or if it's Mumbai then it could be MMRDA charge and all these charges 
are also mentioned in this particular thing. This just helps an agent to talk with his client and accordingly helps him to actually build confidence in the client's mind as to what all things he is going to be doing with the client. The last block, which is the H block, is the work done for the client. Be it your buyer client or the seller or maybe your lessor or a lessee, whatever work you are doing for the client, say for example you are maybe giving a paper advertisement, maybe you are showing a property, maybe you are calling 10 people or updates to the client, maybe in terms of maybe called the client and found out the legal work or collected the legal documents or maybe something else. All these things are captured in this particular thing and this just helps you to actually ensure that you are able to actually track as to what all activity you are doing on the client and maintain it in a recorded format. For broker associates, it becomes really useful that when they actually have all the forms in one small file and they are actually following up on all the forms on a regular basis. Say for example, if you have written over here follow up after two days or follow up after three days, then you know for sure that on the 18th of January I wrote that follow up after three days. On the 21st when you open the form, you will immediately make a call to that person. The probability of losing the client just becomes reduced because you are not able to, you are not going to lose that particular client's interest. On an average we have seen that an agent is working of say 20 to 30 properties at a time and if he has a database of these 20 to 30 properties, when I said properties it could be listings and on the other side it could be maybe a buyers. So all these forms individually when he keeps recorded in a file format and just carries the file wherever he goes, whichever property he shows and maintains the recorded information of the same. It becomes really easy for him to actually take things forward and work in a systematic planned manner. The entire idea is to be able to help you actually increase the scalability of doing transactions within the entire system by working in a planned manner. Thank you very much for your time once again.